Mm. We need a little bottle of hand sanitizer. All right. Right. You, you, you doing the opening prayer? All right. Come close. This is your seat. The psalmist David said, I will lift up mine eyes up to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. Behold, he that keepeth thee will not slumber nor sleep. Behold, he that keepeth Israel, sorry, shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. The Lord shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Amen. We will now have a prayer by Elder Damian Edwards. Heavenly Father, dear God, we are thankful, we are grateful for who you are. Indeed, it's a solemn time at this time. And dear God, we pray that you are going to console the family and all those who are here physically and those who are viewing online at this time. Be with the family indeed and the well-wishers, dear God. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that everything will be done decent in order. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 We are here this afternoon in celebration of the life of Leslie Charles Cunningham. We're here to support Sister Alma, his wife, as well as the rest of the family. Indeed, it is a solemn occasion, uh, something that it's difficult for us to get accustomed to, but indeed it's a part of our existence here on earth, which indeed is death, which means that each and every one of us has the responsibility of ensuring that we prepare as much as is possible under God to face this day, whether it is death, our own death, or death of a loved one. I believe that God indeed is present, Sister Alma, to bring comfort and to bring cheer and to strengthen during this time of grief. And we want to recognize him even through one of the means that he has given unto us to bring comfort, and that is through the means of singing. And so we will now sing the song, Rejoice, the Lord is King, number 221 in the hymnal. Uh, Sister Evelyn, you will raise this song for us. Rejoice, the Lord is King, your Lord and King adore. Rejoice, give thanks and sing and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say, rejoice. Jesus, the Savior, reigns, the God of truth and love. When he had purged all sins, he took his seat above. Lift up your heart, 
Lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say, rejoice. His kingdom cannot fail, he rules all earth and hell. The keys of death and grave are to all Jesus give. Lift up your heart, lift up your heart. Rejoice again, I say, rejoice, kitchen. Rejoice in glorious hope, all other church shall come and take his servants up to their eternal home. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say, rejoice. Amen. Amen. We continue with a passage of scripture or scripture reading. Have your Bible on your phone. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We read verses 51. Mm -hmm. Verses 51 unto 58. We must though the rain would like to uh, be part of this celebration this afternoon. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 to 58. It says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall, we all shall not sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. But when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy victory? O death, where is thy all right, I have the ASV version here. It says, O death, where is thy victory? O death, where is thy sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. Unmovable, Sister Alma, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Praise be to God. We we'll now move into our tributes section, and I'll have Elder, would you coordinate this tribute section for us, please? Okay. All right. All right, so at this time, um, we know that there are those who are online. They will also like to share their tribute. And we will, the only unfortunate thing here is that we don't have a screen so you all could see. But if you go on your phone, I believe the link was sent and you'll be able to see what those overseas would have sent in. But this time, um, if it's possible, anybody want to say something at this time, you can come forth at this time okay i right, thought so we'll start with sister um this is the evening Kennedy. sorry <laughs> yeah that's good afternoon everyone <laughs> thank you Okay, I entered the home of brother and sister Cunningham with my husband and grandchildren some years ago due to the illness of sister Cunningham. In entering the home, I could have felt the warmth, the acceptance, which was quite evident from all the fam family members in the home. 
We went regularly for Friday evening worship to welcome in the Sabbath. After Sister Cunningham recuperated from her illness, we continued visiting, and I particularly continued visiting for quite some time. As a taxi driver, if I'm coming out of Plymouth empty, I will pass in to talk with them and pray with them. And while I'm there, Brother Cunningham has always been this calm, peaceful, smiling person. It's only one thing I could remember him complaining about is them physio them foot here, them needed again real trouble. That's the only thing that I heard him complain about, the knees, the, the feet. They were not willing to carry him. But regardless of what he was going through, he was always peaceful and quiet, smiling and calm. One other thing that I noticed is that he, in that home, people were always there. You will go and meet some lady that I don't know. She's in the kitchen. She's either cooking or baking. Somebody else will be the in-law or the cousin, grandchildren. They were always there. And that is because of the warmth and the love that emanated from the home. On one occasion when I visited, Brother Cunningham was in the garden. And I wrote here, <laughs> it was a difficult to reach to garden. But he was up there sitting flat and doing his gardening, cleaning the sweet potato and what have you. I stayed there with him for quite a while and spoke with him and I had to plead with him to get out of the hot sun. He enjoyed what he was doing. Sometimes when I stay too long to visit, he will chide me and say, don't stay so long next time, don't stay so long next time. You know, I, I felt so warm. I felt like a family member because every time I went, you know, I was readily accepted. I continued visiting and praying until I learned that Brother Cunningham was in the hospital. And every day I will talk with Sister Cunningham, find out how he is going. And she told me he wanted to come home. And then she told me he was cool. He was okay. He said the young, young girls are taking care of him. He was okay. You know, and I chuckled because, you know, that sounded like him. At his 80th birthday, however... There was this, I was invited to a surprise birthday party. And I went to the time that they gave. And when they brought Brother Cunningham, and he realized that it was his party that he didn't know about. He cried, you know, and I, I, I looked at him. And, you know, when I had a chance to talk with him, he said, yeah, they set me up, they set me up, you know. But my husband died by accident. This year will be three years. And Brother and Sister Cunningham were abroad when he died and i learned that brother cunningham cried for my husband because he said that my husband was the one man who used to visit him and my husband used to call him daddy so you know he had a wonderful relationship and i felt like a family member brother cunningham will be sorely missed i don't know how i will go to that home and not see him sitting toward the east of the building you know taking in the sun and the breeze and I will go there and rub up his head and have conversations with him. He will be sorely missed. May his soul rest in peace. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, we have Miguel coming at this time. Hey, everybody. This thing on? Nice. All right. Leslie Cunningham. A.K. Pops, Poppy, Uncle Les, Brother Les. Each one of his names I just mentioned represented different aspects of his personality. And people who, care, who came in contact with him throughout his life. A husband, a father, grandfather, great-grandfather, an uncle, a brother, and friend to many. He enjoyed playing cards, gardening, watching cricket, and he was a top electrician. As a husband, I saw him with one woman for 30 years of my life, right? He was married for 47. And that shows how committed he was to his wife, Alma Cunningham, a strong black woman because he was a great black man. A father of seven children, was a man of principle, discipline, and full of wisdom, and nurturing 
with a Tiantec belt. Grandfather of many, great grandfather of many, uncle to many, and brother to multitude of friends. Hence his name, Brother Les. To sum it up, everyone that grew up under his roof experienced that old school discipline. Being provided for, received wisdom, and was taught by him. Pops was the perfect example of our father figure. As big as you are, and even though he was of age, he could still get cut ass. 1 Timothy 5 8 says, But if any man provided not for his own, especially for those of his household, he had denied the faith and is was an infidel. Surely that scripture did not apply to Pops. Surely he provided for his household, and which was many, many children under one roof. The last time I spoke with Pops, I was able to tell him how much I appreciated him for taking care of me throughout all the years, and he had a great impact on my life. We could never forget Pops. And we serve a God who knows the end from the beginning. Let us be comforted with the fact that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Thank you very much. Amen. Um, is there anybody here? Okay, one more. So we have space for two more, and we have the sisters coming. A pleasant good day to those who are viewing online. My name is Agnes Nelson Thomas. Oh, pressure. <laughs> we are here to celebrate Pops. My tribute will be a two in one. So that means real special. The first one would be a poem. Your smile. Though your smile is gone forever and your hand we cannot touch. Still we have you, mm. pressure, our pops, you're doing what I want, but God is in control all the time. I'm going to start again in the name of Jesus. Your smile, though your smile is gone forever and your hand we cannot touch, still we have so many memories of pops who we love so much. Your memory is our keepsake, and you will never be apart. God has you in his keeping, and you know, Pops, all of we got your inner we heart. Hmm. Pops, hmm. Now when we go say, oh, Pops, you never answer. But like, like, like I hear now, such is life. It was early this year that Pops Tekin with a stroke. He went to the hospital and he came home back. Here Pops asked Alice, so Alma, when we be tech sick, what happened? Man, you Alice tell Pops that countless time. But I know how sickness does go. He said, who cry? He called Melit name. Alice said, yeah, she cry. First watch Alice. You cry? Before she could answer, me say, cry what? Pops say, well, now we cry now. Pops was a jovial soul. After Pops took the stroke, he started to go for therapy. Wait, my eye wait. I hope you don't be to demonstrate. <laughs> Pops went for therapy. So yours truly there with Pops, eh? So the young lady said, Mr. Cunningham, how are you today? He said, I'm good, I'm good. She said, all right. You're going to do some exercise for me today, but you're doing them. I walk 40, but you're doing them instead of 10. <laughs> she said, you ready? Pops a long time. <laughs> so Pops now ready to do it. Thing. And Pops have the answer. And she counting one, two, 
three a hey, pops. You are so bad, Compton. Wild pops. Normally, I'm going over. Is it, is it good in neighbor? I didn't mention that, but nobody, no, all I know. Pops, time to bed. Going in the bathroom. See, 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 see me now. A bed man. If you see my rub down, my boy. When we reach down there, it's a ticket. Mr. Tikewa, Mr. Ashi's cold puppy lay down. Pops, I could tell you about that. Well, if you know Pops, you know he loves his wallet. When I say Pops, where wallet? Right here. You know, Pops, where went? Man, where wallet they now? Anyhow, Pops again in the bathroom, boy. Take off his pants right outside the door. Done, beard. I said, Pops, but wait. What wallet there? He said, hmm. He said, all you see me a bed here. Me not concentrate on the bed, you know. The wallet there, the pants, you know, see my watch down there. <laughs> Pops. Pops. Hmm. Did I mention the love hat? Oh, Lord. Well, Pops also love hat, eh? All them summers they get. None of them can outdo this here today. Me make one for you. You go wear that one here with pride. And you know, brother, go wear the rest. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Pops was a darling. He really was a darling. Pops, oh, Pops, brotherless, Leslie, whatever, whoever want to call him. Pops, may your soul rest in peace. Good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeremy. And um, for as long as I have known myself, I have, I have known Pops. Let me start by saying, for the people who came before they were correct, eh? um, I think Pops might have a little bit of trouble when he go into the pearly gates today because they were going to take place. They're going to try to figure out one name he registered under. The man had more aliases than the most wanted. Brotherless, uncleless, pops, puppy, grandpa. Because sometimes, you know, depending on how children feel, they'll call him grandpa. We used to call him all of these names, as, as everybody would have just said. But it, wa it was all terms of endearment. It was because we loved him. And it was because he was a loving person. When my grandfather passed away, I was only about three years old. And I, I, I vaguely remember him. Like, and ever since that time, Uncle S, Pops. My grandmother used to tell me, I used to call him Leslie. Leslie, Leslie, as a little boy. Before I learned manners, that is. I would go across, Alma, Leslie. Because, of course, you know, when I hear any grandparents talking, as a child, I would use the same terms. And Pops was all I knew growing up. You know, he was a foundation. And as Miguel said, a lot of us learned. He saved, he saved a lot of us because of the examples he set. I don't, know if, I, I don't know how much Pops used to drink. I have never seen him drunk. I never see Pops smoking. The kind of, I mean, whatever he did with his friends as children, we didn't see it. He always endeavored to show us the best of himself. What's more, their yard, Alice and Pops' yard, was the community center in the valley. We call it the valley or the hole. This is where all the children would meet to play. This is where we all gathered together. So as Miguel said, yes, Pops was a disciplinarian. Pops used to work tea and tech. How much all you know about the tea and tech leather belt? All you know about them stories, eh? When we make a mischief, Alice is cool. Alice ain't really beating up, you know. But when Pops come home, and Alice said, Leslie, well, that's when people like me used to try to get home. <laughs> I, I, at that time, my group was like Dwayne and Andrea because they were generation. And that's the thing about Pops. He was so blessed. You know, the Bible tells us about being blessed and seeing the fourth and sword generation. Pops saw them. Pops would have been there for his children, Wendy and, and Lezu and, and brother, my mommy and all of them. He was there for them. Then he would have been there for us. He was there for Irwin and Sean. He was there for Jimmy and, and, and Javon and, and, and Jared and Malik. And he was there to see great grandchildren. Pops even saw, I mean, people like Kian who grew up in the yard. Pops saw our children. Me and Kian, he saw our children. 
So Pops is like a great, great grandfather to so many people. You know, just by growing up and being affiliated with the yard. And, and, and you heard it before, he was a farmer. Pops liked to rear chickens. Pops had rabbits. Pops used to plant the land. So when I see Pops coming and he had the corn and the peas, I remember as a little child, we sitting in a group and we just liming and talking and having a good time shelling peas. And if Pops share with you, Pops ain't giving you no peas to shell in. That peas already shelled, that corn already husk. The chicken clean, that is the kind of person bra less, uncle less was. You know, he just shared that love. I remember some of the fun times he had is when the chicken coop was left open by someone who had to go and feed it. And he would gather us up and pops us like the general. He had all the children in the yard and we were having fun catching chickens. I mean, that's the kind of memories you can't pay me for. We would run down the chicken and who holding the cockroach bag and who afraid of the fowl. So you can't, you can't hold them. So you hold the bag. And the hardest thing, I don't my partner killer. The hardest thing is when you get a full bag of chicken and killer, let go the bag and you have to start from scratch. And Pops was in the corner directing the baby below the mango tree, just directing everybody as we did that. Pops loved this cricket. Pops loved West Indies. Anytime I check Pops, I say, Pops, how we team doing, boy? You supporting that team still? Well, boy, what we gonna do? And as I go into how Pops loved West Indies, let me give you a little joke. From as early as I remember Pops, about three years old, four years old, Pops just called me Dudu. Pops is the only man I know could call me Dudu. Nobody else can call me Dudu. And I will come sometime last year. Bro, let's Pops, how are you going? Yes, Dudu. I was, I said, Pops, ain't seen my face here on my face. Pops calling big man Dudu. But of course, I can't tell Pops that because I know that it's because Pops love me and Pops look at me as a son. So I'm there and I'm talking to Pops about cricket and Pops supporting West Indies die hard. I said, Pops, well, you had to watch out for you and I now because I don't have the heart to support West Indies. But he never gave up faith in his team. He always watched his team. Pangi was sharing a story, Lester, where Pops was always fun to be around. I remember as a little boy seeing him coming and play cards with his father. You know, and he was sharing the story of how he would come and play cards with his daddy. And Pops used to give him level licks every Saturday night. And after Pops finished beat him, he turned around and said, Alma, I'm killing him with licks. You know? And he also told a story he was saying about when he was a little child. Let's, let's start at his. And he, Pops drove him to Trinidad. I, I said it right. I didn't, I didn't read it wrong. Pops drove Lester to Trinidad. He was overjoyed because it was the first time to drive to Trinidad. However, as he got old and he started to go to school, he realized that Pops only carried him to Mount Thomas. You know, how children, our perception could be different as little children. So that was his version of going to Trinidad. And then Malik was sharing about when she got pregnant. And you know how these senior people are, they have, they just had a way of picking up on things. He watched Malik and he finds she was looking different. So he said, Malik, are you looking different? So and Malik stoops, Pops, nothing, nothing. Malik, a belly I get? Malik, she an answer. Malik, why you don't tap your foot, girl? Why you tap your foot, sir? Anyway, when you see that child come, may I want to pick me, eh? But for today, that is Pop. You can separate Pop from his great-grandchild. You know they are, they, they, will, they will both the parent, but when the great-grandchild come or the grandchild come, is the apple of the eye and is the same with Malik's child, right? And that was how Pop was. Pop was a man who showed love. When he was remembering recently, about two Saturdays ago, when she spoke to him from the hospital bed and she said, Puppy, let's just say a prayer of repentance. And he holds you right there. He said, Every time you want me to pray for ask God to forgive me. How much time I go do that? Me not do nothing wrong. He said, Anyway, me go say the prayer with you. But let me let you know, I'm more saved than you are now. When, <laughs> and he said, eventually they pray. And he said, all right, all right. Let me remind you, no man leaves this world alive. And this is the kind of person that Pops was. For all the talks he would give you, for all the advice he would give you, he was somebody who would never try to give you bad advice. He was somebody who would be real, who would tell you the truth. 
and he was somebody who would he was he would show his emotion he never hid it i am fortunate because i got to know him he impacted my life and i don't think that i would have been the person i am without people like pops uncle less in my life and i just want to say to the family you know we really have lost a good one today but this is something when earth lose a person heaven gains an angel so we just have to think of pops as being close to god and his memory the love he instilled in us all the good times cricket in the yard when he was the umpire overlooking the teams when he was help, helping us to learn something when he was teaching brother about wiring the house all these different things will always remain in our hearts and in our memories and alice I take this time to just let you know I love you. Because without you all looking after me as a child, I don't know where I would have been. So that's all I wanted to say today, and I thank you very much for this time. Amen. And so our online viewers, you are not physically here, but the Cunningham family is well represented. And those of you who are living abroad and you are familiar with the village of Plymouth, they are on the outskirts because of COVID-19. They have to be scattered. But I want to let you know that the family is well represented. This afternoon, as the final tribute, I would like to say on behalf of, because I'm wearing many hats today, on behalf of the Mary Seals Seventh-day Adventist Church, also the ASI Tobago chapter, and also Tobago Streaming Studio as well, we want to say, you know, all the best to the Cunningham family. I know Sister Alma Cunningham, personally a wonderful sister in the Lord and also Brother Cunningham. We could remember, you know, when church had, you know, people that we could sit together, you know, Sister Cunningham and Brother Cunningham will sit together. And, you know, when they leave in church, when church is over, they will leave together. And when you hear what, you know, the brother just said and the sister who said before, you know, we could all say yes. It is a family, and he was a father figure to all of us in the village of Marysville. I did not born and grow up in Marysville. I came into Marysville, and I get to know about Brother Cunningham and also Sister Cunningham. So I just want you to know that, you know, Brother Cunningham did his best. What this has said to all of us is that we have an opportunity. If we didn't do our best, this is the right time to start to do our best for the Lord. As we see what is taking place around us, this is just an example that we need to make our calling an election show. Before we come, before we come, Pastor, come and do the sermon, we will have the eulogy at this time. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. All right. Uh, at this time, I'm going to ask Pastor to come and do this sermon at this time. A song? All right. Uh, I'll ask Sister Kennedy to come at this time. As we sing the song, How Great Thou Art. It is in the bulletin, so you could sing along as she lead out for us. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout. The universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great the world, how great the world. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great the world, how great the world, when through the woods and flourish glades I wander, 
and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur, the brooks and feel the gentle breeze. Then sings my song, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. this? And when I think that God his Son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on a cross my burdens gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Amen. Pleasant evening to the Cunningham family, to the Sandy family. I too at this time want to extend my condolences on behalf of my family, the Frederick family, as well as on behalf of the Northwest District of Seventh-day Adventist churches. I would have been familiar with Brother Cunningham and would have been able to spend time in his presence. This afternoon, I want us to look briefly at a passage of Scripture, John chapter 11. Have your Bibles, you can turn there with me. It's quite a familiar story. By the grace of God, a few pointers from it we will gather this afternoon. But before I do so, Let's ask the Lord for understanding and the healthy ability to appreciate his word. Father, we recognize that even in sickness and death, you are still speaking to us. And so we ask that you would draw nigh even now. Grant us your Holy Spirit that as we speak and as we listen, we will hear your voice loud and clear bringing comfort and strength. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. John chapter 11, familiar passage of scripture. It's John chapter 11, starting from verse 1. It says, Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, of the village of Mary and her sister Martha. I'm reading from the American Standard Version. Verse 2 says, And it was that Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. The sisters therefore sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. What can we learn from this passage of Scripture this afternoon? Firstly, we note 
that Lazarus was sick. Yeah. That sickness indeed is a part of life. Yeah. It's unfortunate because we know from reading the Bible account that in the beginning, God created man after he created everything else and he said it was good. There was no sickness. There was no pain. There wasn't any disease. But then sin came. And as a result of sin, sickness came upon this earth. And so approximately 4,000 years after sin entered into this world, the Bible records that a certain man by the name of Lazarus was sick. But this man had a sister. Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, he had two sisters. And no doubt those two sisters would have been concerned about him. I have no doubt that Brother Leslie's wife was concerned about him when he was sick. I have no doubt that the uh, daughters and the sons and the grandchildren of Brother Leslie was concerned about him when he was sick. I have no doubt that they prayed for him while he was sick. As a matter of fact, I remember the Saturday just before he died, I, uh, I called, I got a call and I, I called Sister Alma and we, we prayed together and I could hear the concern in her voice. I could hear the love for her husband uh, that she wished and she desired that indeed he will get well. He would have gotten well. We're looking at the passage of scripture here where it says that it was that Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was sick. Yes, they sent unto Jesus, they called unto Jesus because their desire indeed was that Jesus, that great healer, Oh yes, Jesus, that mighty physician, uh, Jesus who is able, Jesus who is powerful, that very said Jesus Christ who healed the sick, caused the lame to walk and the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak, that very said Jesus, they believed that he was able, if anybody was able, he was able to do it for Lazarus. But I want you to note something here. Sister Alma, it was the Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment. In other words, she was close to Jesus Christ. Real close to Jesus Christ. The, 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 the passage didn't only stop there. It went on to say, Behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Not only was uh, Mary and, and Martha close to Jesus Christ, but Lazarus was also loved by Jesus. What is this saying to us? It is saying to us that even those who are close to Jesus Christ get sick. Mm -hmm. Even those whom Jesus Christ loves, they get sick as well. The love of Jesus Christ does not exclude us from sickness. It does not prevent us from coming down with a disease. COVID-19 is among us. Lord have mercy. I want to let you know, not because you are found in Christ Jesus. Forgive me if I take this mask off mm -hmm. at this time. Not because you are close to Jesus Christ means that you won't get sick. Not because you are Christian mean that 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 you won't uh, experience illness. Not because you go to church whether it is on Saturday or Sunday mean that you won't experience what everybody else is experiencing around this time. No, it doesn't mean that at all whatsoever. Sickness comes even to those 
who love Jesus Christ, even to those who are close to Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, I want everyone who is listening to know that Jesus Christ loves everybody. Whether you're close to him or not, he still loves you. Jesus is able to love you while you're near, and he's able to love you even when you are afar off. It's not his desire that you should be afar off, but perchance you decide to stay far away from him, he still loves you, and his desire is towards you. Oh, yes. And so Lazarus was sick. I made the point that the love of God does not exclude us from sickness. I want us to bear that in mind. Verse 4 says, listen to verse 4. It says, when Jesus heard it, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified thereof. Oh, yes, this sickness is not unto death. We are familiar with the story. We know that Lazarus died, as a matter of fact. But Jesus Christ prophesied here and said that this sickness is not unto death, but unto the glory of God. I'm wondering, Sister Alma, if the sickness that Brother Leslie had is was, was unto the glory of God. I'm, I'm wondering, Cunningham family, if the passing of Brother Leslie could be unto the glory of God. You see, for many individuals... Oh, yes. They, many individuals are thinking that, oh, when I come to, to be a Christian, then I'm going to avoid the sufferings of this life. But that isn't so. But it is actually through the sufferings of this life that the name of the Lord is glorified and will continue to be glorified. I want to let somebody know that the death of Brother Leslie uh, can actually lead to the glory of God. I heard a story recently. I was in a family meeting. And in that family meeting, one of the relative shared that when his father died he was in the middle of school i think he was doing a master's program and as a result of the death of his father he had to leave where he was in the united states of america cut his course short and come back to tobago to bury his father oh yes that must have been disturbing <laughs> that must have been a bit upsetting. Not only he had to deal with the death of his father, but he also had to deal with the interruption of his study. It turned out that he went back, completed several more courses, but then um, because he his study was interrupted, um, he did not get to complete the course, Brother Damien. Why? Because the school soon went out of uh, existence let me put it that way uh, the school was no longer accredited the program was no longer viable he did not get to complete that course oh that would have been heartache oh that would have been pain think about the money that he spent think about the nights that he spent uh, oh yes learning the, those work reading those books uh, pounding those books going through such material the sacrifice that he would have made concerning his family life and the joys that he could have had it seemed unfair but the school was no longer accredited, which means that if he had gotten that degree, listeners online, if he had gotten that degree, that degree would not have worth anything. Mm. And so he had to go to another college, another university to finish the course. He finished the course at the university and to cut the story short, having completed that course, he went on to further studies. And because he did his degree at that second university, he was able to get the certification that he needed 
far more easily than he would have gotten it had he spent time or completed his studies at that first university the death brought about a glory that he could not see he could not understand god is working in every situation sister alma god is working in every situation and so they said he said this is for the glory of god but i want someone to know that the ultimate glory eh, uh, of God is, is realized when Jesus Christ comes again and those who are found in him, those who die in him will be resurrected from the grave with bodies that are incorruptible, with bodies that are immortal, with bodies that shall indeed be changed in the twinkling of an eye when he comes again. That that indeed is the glory of God. And so he was sick. Verse 5. Mm. Let's excuse me a while. Verse 5 says, Now Jesus loved matter. And not only matter, he loved his sister. That is love. That's a lot of love. Verse 6 says, When therefore he heard he was sick, he abode at that time two days in the place where he was. Listen to this. Can you believe that? This passage is telling me that Jesus loved Lazarus, and not only he loved Lazarus, but he also loved Martha and Mary, the sisters of Lazarus. And that Mary was very close to him, extremely close to him. But after he heard that he was sick, he abode in the same place two days. Can you believe that? Now, now I have a baby. <laughs> Brother Damien, I have a baby. And I place that baby on the bed. The baby is now able to crawl my sister. And you know when a baby is crawling, that baby wants to touch this and touch that. And the baby wants to go here and the baby wants to go there. And you have to put barricades all around the bed so that the baby won't fall off. Now just imagine that for one reason or the other, the baby escapes the barricade and fall off of the bed. Now, do you imagine that Pastor Frederick would say, um, give me two minutes, two minutes, and then I'm going to go and see about the baby. Am I going to do that? Uh, who here is going to wait two minutes uh, before you go and attend to that child that you love falls? You know, if it's uh, one of our teenagers, you know, sometimes our teenagers, they become hardened and stubborn. They, they, they want to assert their independence, my sister. And, and when they're asserting their independence, they don't listen to their parents. And so if something happens to them, the parent might say, Aha, uh -huh, you will stick, stick rocking on your ears. You're not air. Well, you're going to feel so I'm going to leave you for a while so that you could experience that which you were looking for. Not so. But not with the baby. <laughs> not two minutes. As a matter of fact, not two seconds. But Jesus Christ waited for an entire two days. Oh, yes. Sister Alma, we prayed. We cried. We interceded. We begged. We pleaded. We implored. But the Lord has decided to wait. But we have the assurance that even though he has waited, the day that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount upon wings like eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. For the day is coming, Sister Alma, when all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. I'm going to pause here. Why? Because Jesus said something that is pertinent for us to know. He abode in that place for two days. And verse 7 says, Then after this, 
he said unto the disciples, let us go into Judea again. God, Jesus has his own timing. His own timing and his timing is not our timing. We may be wondering, Jesus, why is it that we've been in COVID-19 for more than a year now? Lord, it's too long. I just read some a bulletin coming out from the health authorities. They said that they discovered the first case of gamma. <laughs> Uh, that gamma variant on the island in Tobago. Oh, yes. We, we, we know that there is lambda down in South America uh, causing some havoc. We know that there is the delta all across the world. It seems as though, it seems as though this virus wants to get us in some sort of a fraternity. Lord have mercy. Going through the Greek alphabet with this thing, and we're wondering, God, why is it that you are taking so long to get rid of this disease from us? But God has his own timing. God has his own timing. And he is the all-wise God. We cannot question him at all. Verse 8, it says, the disciples say unto him, Rabbi, the Jews were but now seeking to stone thee and goest thou thither again. The Jews wanted to stone Jesus Christ. They hated him. There are individuals today who hate Jesus Christ and hate those who stand with Jesus Christ. I want to let you know that even though there are those who hate Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ will brave the hatred of men. Jesus Christ will, will brave the scorn of individuals and he will come to you at the right time. You need not worry. As a matter of fact, there are individuals who are saying that because of how he was hated when he was here on this earth the first time. That he's definitely not coming back here a second time. Because if they hated him then, how much more they hate him now? I think we could look around us and we can see that it is evident that Jesus Christ is not loved by this world. That Jesus Christ is hated by so many in this world. But I want to let you know that hatred will not stop Jesus Christ from coming to those whom he love and those who have given their lives to him. The hatred of men, oh yes, the terror of governments won't stop Jesus Christ from coming for you. As a matter of fact, he said in his word, I go to prepare a place for you. Anybody believes that today? I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. Jesus Christ is coming back again for someone. Oh, yes. Is it you? Is it you? Is it me? Ask yourself that question. Is Jesus Christ coming back again for me? I want to let you know that indeed he's coming back again for you. Question is, are you going to get ready? Let me give to you this last part. He's coming. Then Jesus answered. Are there not 12 hours in a day? If a man walk in the day, he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because the light is not with him. I want to thank God that the light indeed was with Brother Leslie. Oh, yes, and I do trust and pray that the light will be with everyone who is hearing my voice. Verse 11, we end here today. It said, These things spake he. After this, he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus is fallen asleep, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Brothers and sisters, today, what we experience, or what we are witnesses of today, is only but a sleep. Sister Alma, it's only a sleep. This death 
is but a sleep. The Bible calls it the sleep of death. But the time cometh when not only those who have given their lives to Jesus Christ will be awakened from this sleep. I want to let you know that the Bible makes it clear that all who go to the grave shall be awakened from their sleep. Many individuals think that after this life, that is it. There is nothing else to be to worry about. That's not so. Oh, yes. If you sleep in Christ, you shall be awakened. If you sleep outside of Christ, yes, you still shall be awakened as the sun riseth in the east and, and setteth in the west. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And all who sleep in the grave shall rise from that sleep. The question is, which resurrection shall you arise to? Will it be the first resurrection, which is the resurrection of life, <laughs> the resurrection of glory, the resurrection of hope, the resurrection of joy and peace? Or will it be the resurrection of damnation where there will only be condemnation? I want to let you know that it is my desire to be arisen in the resurrection of life, the resurrection of peace. The resurrection of joy. I trust that this will be your desire as well. And so I want to say a prayer. I want to say a prayer for the family at this time. I want to pray that while you are yet alive and you have strength. Oh yes. And the blessings of God are still evident in your life. That you will make the decision. That should you fall asleep, uh -huh. oh yes, not that sleep in the night, but should you fall asleep, as Brother Leslie has fallen asleep, that when you rise from that sleep, you will rise in the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, great is your name. You are greatly to be praised. There is absolutely none like you, Father. We give thee thanks for thy word. Thy word that indeed reminds us of your power. That word, your word that reminds us of your might. Father, we've seen in the passage that not because you love us and because we are near to you, means that we will avoid sickness or even death. Sickness and death still comes to those who are close to thee, mighty God. But you have given us the assurance that though we experience sickness or death, that we shall rise in the resurrection of life where you will make all things new. And I pray indeed that this shall comfort the Cunningham family that this shall comfort the Sandy family, that this shall comfort all the relatives of Brother Leslie at this time to strengthen them. Indeed, uh, they have the hope that if they live for thee and if they die in thee, then it is possible that one day they will see Brother Leslie again and will be able to spend the ceaseless ages of eternity with him. And so comfort the grieving family. Strengthen the grieving family I pray in Jesus wonderful name. Amen and amen. Praise be to God. Amen. We are going to turn to our program to the hymn when the role is called up yonder I'll be there. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore And the roll is called up yonder I'll be there When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder When the roll 
is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and morning when the dead in Christ shall rise, and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let us labor. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 the chorus again, when the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Okay. At this time, those of us who are physically present here, we are going to go to the bearer side. Those of you online, we want you to stay. You have been a very good viewing audience at this time. And while the pastor is positioned to the graveside, you will be hearing some wonderful music to keep us until that time. We are just going, just physically, literally, we will make those of us who are physically here, we're going to either make a left or a right while you wait online to see the lowering of the casket at the grave site. My God will turn it around. I have seen my God turn it around. There are so many, many, many times in my life that I have seen my God turn it around. Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 unto 18 says but we would not have you ignorant brethren concerning them that fall asleep that ye sorrow not even as the rest who have no hope for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also that have fallen asleep in Jesus 
will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of God, that we that are alive, that are left unto the coming of the Lord, shall in no wise precede them that are fallen asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we that are alive, that are left, shall together with them be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. As much as it pleaseth the Lord to allow Brother Leslie Charles Cunningham, a father, a husband, a brother, a son, to lay down the burdens of this life, we do now tenderly commit his body to the ground. Thus to thus, earth to earth, matter to matter, in the sure and certain hope that those who live for Christ will rise with him in that glorious resurrection when he cometh again. We shall now sing What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and graves to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. What peace we often forfeit, oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Get trouble anyway. We should never be discouraged. Be to the Lord in prayer. But we find a friend so faithful. Oh, we all are To the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy leader? But with a load of prayer, precious Savior, still already. To the Lord in prayer. Mm, friends despise, forsake thee. 
take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield. So we'll find the service there. Let's sing, when we all get to heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he prepare for us a place. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he prepare for us a place oh, when, when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We will sing and shout the victory while we walk the pilgrim path we clogged will over spread the sky but when traveling is all over not a shadow not a sign when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be Oh, when we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trust in serving every day. Just one glimpse of healing glory will the toys of life repay. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Oh, when we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. On what to the prize before us soon is beauty will be whole. Soon the pearly gates will open. We shall tread the streets of gold when we are get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Oh, when we are see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory when we all, when we all let to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Oh, when we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Four two eight. Why pass or is it? There's a land that is fairer than thee. By my faith we shall fear it above. For the Father will go over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. In the sweetness we by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sinless, we by and by, we shall be on that beautiful shore. We shall sing on that beautiful shore. 
the melody of songs of the blessed, and the spirit shall sorrow no more. Not the sight of the blessing of rest, in the endless week, by and by, we shall meet on the beautiful shore. In the sweetness we by and by, we shall meet on the beautiful shore, to a bountiful Father above, who we will offer a tribute of freedom for the glorious gift of His love, and the blessing that hallow all be. In the endless sweet by and by, my we shall meet on the beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on the beautiful shore. In the sweet, in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on the beautiful shore in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on the beautiful shore when the roll, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the glory of His resurrection shall be. When the silver good shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Oh, when the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. On the bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall lie, and the glory of his resurrection share, when his chosen one shall gather to their home beyond the sky, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Oh, when the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn to set in sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Oh, yes. Then when all of life is over and the work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, on the when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Oh, when the roll, oh, when the roll is called up yonder, oh, when the roll is it's called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Ask me not. Pass me not, O gentle Saviour, yeah, my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Saviour, 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 hear my humble cry. While another's now are calling, do not pass me by. Let me at thy throne of mercy find a sweet relief. Kneeling there in the contrition, help my unbelief. 
Savior, hear my humble cry. Why, Lord, does the one call in? Do not pass me by. Trust him only in thy merit. Would I seek thy faith? Be my wounded, broken spirit. Help me by thy grace. Oh, yes, Savior, Savior, Savior. Hear my humble cry. While the waters of our calling. where there will be no more crying mm -hmm. no more sighing no more sickness no more death no more dying but an eternity in the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with whom there is no changing with whom there is only peace and joy mm. Brother Damien, do you yes. have any final words or yep. even the final prayer yes. as we close? And so, viewers, before we pray, we will just like to let you know that, you know, Brother Cunningham was a faithful man. But what is more important, ladies and gentlemen, that because of the viewing of this funeral, you have really supported the Cunninghams and the rest of the extended family, and they are indeed grateful mommy hell is holding up very well right now you may not be seen but she's smiling meaning that her, her 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 cousins and her family are right there close with her and so we want to say thank you thank you thank you as we close our eyes to end the stream. Oh, Heavenly Father, dear God, we are truly grateful and we are thankful for your grace. Dear God, we are thankful that, you know, the family stay together. We are grateful, dear God, that Sister Cunningham, the wife, you know, we can still see smiles on her face. It's not easy, but with God, all things are possible. Be with the family, dear God, as they depart never from your presence, but continue to walk in the will of the Lord. Let the words of our mouth 
and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh God, our strength and my Redeemer. Amen. Amen. My God will turn it around. I have seen my God turn it around. There are so many, many, many times in my life that I have seen my God turn it around.
times in my life that I have seen my God turn it around. 